two, one.
it's so great to have you join us this morning. Welcome to Riverside, Riverside Live Stream. Church. Riverside Church. Live Stream. Live Stream Edition. Yep. Number one. Hi, my name is Levy. My name is Beth, and it's great to have you here with us today. I feel yeah. like I've not done this for ages, but you've not done I haven't it for, for absolutely ages. Yeah, maybe three years? No, no. It's yeah. not been three years. Okay, a year. Dramatic there. I don't know though, did you do it when you came back in April? Did they put you on the studio? Maybe I did. Maybe. I can remember. Maybe I did. Well, Levis has come, he's a special guest today. He's flown all the way from, from Brazil, Brazil just to join us on the live stream today, really, haven't you? Yeah, of course. No, not really. Well, why are you back in the UK then, Lev? So I'm back because now I'm the new digital pastor in Riverside Church. Ooh. Um, so yeah, so you guys are going to be seeing me here a lot, uh, which is. Sorry cool. about that, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm back in the UK now for a good, hopefully. How exciting. And how's it been coming back? Enjoyed the weather? Yeah, actually, I did. I was expecting cold weather. It is I was quite expecting. Cold. It's chilly today, don't you? No, it is, but it is sunny outside. And there's a window behind, there's so a, I was like, it's sunny, sunny outside. outside. Can you see it in the camera? <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is cold, but like, last time that I came here in September, it was really like cold and rainy. And I feel like I got a little bit of the end of summer, which mm, was nice. Yeah, I think as well, you came from Brazilian winter, didn't you? So it's not like you've come from like yeah. 35 degrees. I know, I know. So uh, hopefully it's not been that big a jump for you. No, it hasn't been. Been okay, but how was your journey over here from Brazil, Levs? Nice, well, nice and short? No, really. Um, it was a lot of flights. There is like, you can take a direct flight from Sao Paulo, that's where I'm from, direct to London but that's quite expensive so I opted for the cheapest option would be flying through America so I had to take Absolutely three flights wild, yeah. yeah three flights basically not short 20 hours Ooh, 28 hours and 28 hours of traveling yeah well all good you had Wendy's though didn't you the what? American fast food Wendy's yeah I had Wendy's uh, I had Dunkin' Donuts? Dunkin', Dunkin Donuts. Well, that's yeah, hard Dunkin to say, isn't Dunkin Donuts. It? Dunkin' Donuts. But, did you have a donut from Dunkin' Donuts? No, only coffee. I mean, what an absolute disaster. Why go to a place called Dunkin' Donuts and have because a I was, coffee? Because I was full, like, that's the thing. I, I don't know how I was in the past, but they, they, they feed you quite well now. Oh, yeah, that's true. What was the food like on the plane? What did you have? Uh, I don't know, I had quite a... Well, it's not healthy, like it's pasta, it it's is like, healthy. well, there's a lot of cheese in it and oil, Ooh, but it was nice. The cool thing about it is, if you're flying with Delta, tip of the day, they're not like sponsoring us, but <laughs> Delta, if you're listening, anyway, tip of the day, if you're flying with Delta, they usually have what they call snack all the time, so I didn't know that, but you can go to the back of the airplane, and there's like a, a tray with snacks, and you can get any snacks you want throughout there. Throw that is the quite time. good. That is, yeah. that is quite decent. What about drinks? Are they available as well? Water, only water. That's but it is cool because like, like no one knows that. Yeah, and sometimes snacky, you get yeah. snacky, and I just realized that when I saw like a boy snacking something, I was like, "What did you get, man?" Yeah. And he was like, uh, "There's in the back of the airplane," which is really cool. You're, so. about, you're about to steal it from the little kid, weren't you? Like, give me a chocolate bar. I always find that crisps creep me out on, tra on trains, on aeroplanes, because they like inflate. Crisps. Yeah, they like go really big and you don't want to be that person that like opens it and it's like pop! I've it's never like, realised that. They, they do because the air pressure, they like inflate. They're like a balloon. Has anyone else experienced that? I've never experienced that. Honestly, okay. I was so terrified when I, I flew to Brazil. I was so terrified that I was going to set it off and they were going to be like, get down! The something's exploded and no. it literally, I was just a packet of crisps and I had to ask one of the students to open it for me because I was so stressed. Seriously? I was so stressed and it Are you joking? Yeah, but the thing is, it's just air and so they open it, it was literally like, Eww. and that was it. And I was like, well, that's the most tragic thing ever. And then I looked like a right idiot. The funny thing is that she wasn't terrified of the turbulence, which is quite terrifying, or of many other things. No, no, she was terrified of the fact oh, of crisps. And the yogurt was the same, that inflated as well. The little lids like Maybe that up. never happened with me. Well, obviously, obviously, Delta's a bit, a bit extra. Yeah. I don't know the turbulence, honestly, though, because it was pretty bad when you came across. Yeah, it, it was you're like repenting for things you haven't even done. You know, you're like, like oh God, if like, anything I've not done, I'm sorry. Just let us know, like, if you experience turbulence in any airplane, just let us know how was your experience. Write in the comments. But 
my one was the worst one yeah, and, I, and I've taken a lot of airplanes in my life and that was the worst like like the the stewards were serving the food and they usually keep on serving when, even when it's shaking but <clears throat> It was so bad that they had to stop. Oh my word. They were like, no, no, we need to stop now. And they're like quite quick. And Off the plane, didn't even get their pasta. Absolute disaster. Yeah, it was quite like a Absolute. different plane. And then it was, it was like 50 minutes of like. And you cannot eat, you cannot sleep, you cannot watch anything, and you're just praying there. Yeah, you love Jesus, please. Please, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, that's literally me when I went to Brazil and it, and it was like really like bumpy. I was like, Jesus, just like right now, just hold this yeah. plane with your angels. Yeah. People next to me thinking like, what is she doing? So basically, we're talking about airplanes because this morning we're going to be talking about missions. Yeah. And well, you're not probably you're not coming to church in the beauty because you are watching the live stream. But Unless you're watching it back, in which place commitment you've watched it that twice. That is true. But everyone that's coming to the beauty, they are getting a airplane get ticket. Ticket. Um, from Riverside Church to the nations. Oh, look at that. How creative is that? <laughs> well, these digital posters, you're absolutely well, wild. How it's just about the experience. It's all about the experience, yeah. We've put seat belts on every seat. Yeah. <laughs> we have to be fair, stuck like mini windows around. We have mini side. windows in the side. We've got like um, guide lights. Does it get to guide. Oh, are they in their airplanes? What? Have you got those little masks that like drop from the overheads just in case? Oh, that happens when you're about to die. Yeah, but if that happens to your airplane, but with and you're Christ, worried about a pack of crisps, I'm really concerned. With Christ, about you've it. got eternal life. So what happens in church? Maybe you don't need them. That is true. Amen. That Jesus, is true. Jesus is the breath of life. I don't need the oxygen mask. No, it is exciting though, and it's gonna be really exciting to hear about all the missionary partners, all yes. the people they're doing. Yes, I'm really excited about that. It is. It's gonna be really good. We've got Chris Lonsdale to speak as well, see. Mm, the he's one and really only. Good. Don't you find? And we were talking about this with Chris Lonsdale, and for you watching at home as well. I never refer to him as just Chris. We were I speaking know. about this. It's always Chris Lonsdale. Like, how bizarre is that? Why do you think that is? Maybe because he's just so like cool. You know, he's just. I, yeah, I don't know any other Chris, so I don't know. Well, I don't know either, no. Guys, it was lovely to talk to you, and I'll see you in the next one. We'll see you in a second. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Riverside Church. It's so great to have you here. If you've only just joined, I'm Beth. And I'm Lavi. And it is so, so great to have you yes. join us online. It yes. is amazing how incredible technology is, isn't it? That you can like connect from anywhere around the world. Like I know. Like that your grandpa so Rodolfo yeah, my joins grandpa. all the way from Brazil. Hi granddad. Hi no, granddad. You wouldn't understand that because it doesn't speak English. Uh, what it, oi vo. Oi vo. Oh, Hopefully he gets that but it is great to have you here and this is an exciting morning. So this morning we'll talk about missions, it's Woo! part of our vision series and I'm really excited. Chris, Chris Lone today is going to be speaking with Rach. Yeah, we've had as well, we've had flowing in the presence, yep. growing in the in family, the family of, God, of God and going in the mission. Dad, Last week we had the discipleship, yeah, going discipleship. in the discipleship and now this week the mission of Pastor Jesus. Pastor Aaron was absolutely right. hyped about that, wasn't he as well? Was he really was like, good. it all rhymes. Which is very exciting. So we're going to go to worship yeah. together, but let's just go and just declare that God is good. And let's Come just on. pray that let's he moves worship. across the nations this morning. It might be your story too. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you together as one family.
is no limit to your power. There is no limit to your power. There is no stopping what you plan. You give us faith to move the mountains and hope to dream again.
this morning. Come have your way in us, Father God, we just thank you this morning. We just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you that, Father God, you just pour out your Holy Spirit on us. You strengthen us. You encourage us. And so, God, this morning, we just open our hearts to you. And we say, Lord, have your way in us. God, I pray that you'll forgive us when we've got so distracted with things around. Father God, help us to be consumed by you, consumed by your love, consumed by your mission. So Father God, we just pray your blessing on everything we do this morning, on every person that's both here and online. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd like to take your seats, we're going to go straight over to Riverside News. Good morning, Riverside. My name is Joe, and this is Riverside News. Good morning, Riverside, and thank you for joining us. And I'd just like to take some time that if you are new and you'd love to get involved, one way we do this is via Church Street. This is the platform app that we use to send out all of our rotors and sign up to everything. If you're interested in signing up, please come speak to me and I will get you signed up on Church Street. Our first bit of news is that again this week we have Alpha starting again. It was our first week last week, but don't worry, it's not too late to get involved and still invite people along. This is on Wednesday the 28th and it starts at 7pm, so see you there. So on the 1st of October, we have uh, our Tourette support group starting again. If you'd like any more information on what our Tourette support group is, please speak to Caitlin Lord after the service. I'm sure she'll make herself aware. She'll probably wave her hands now if you can see her uh, somewhere in the congregation, but she'll, she'll make herself known um, and then yeah, you can catch up with her. So this news is a bit of a thankful praise news. Um, because of the volunteers, we've been able to open the cafe Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Um, so we just want to thank all the volunteers and those that have you know, given their time to be able to do that. Uh, we still need volunteers for some of the other days and just to back up the people that are already there. So if you are interested, please get in touch with us uh, and we can really help support this cafe during this time. And yeah, let's keep praying for Martin regardless. On the 8th of October, we have some prayer time and this is gonna be a chance to get together and pray for the nations. Uh, yeah, we really encourage you to just come along, join in with our prayer. If you want any more information, speak to Beth or Levy uh, and they'll be able to help you out on what's going on. So unfortunately, church, that is the end. So that again means it's time for one of Joe's jokes. So let's all prepare ourselves. Uh, the other day I was working at bank, but unfortunately I got fired. Um, and I got fired because a woman came in and she asked me to check her balance. So I pushed her over. I check a bank balance, but you know, I checked her balance. Yeah, they don't get much better than that, but yeah, we'll see you soon. See you next week. Like he said, can I, uh, do you think this, I can get away with this joke? It's not too insulting, is it? I was like, I think we can just about manage that one. Some of them are getting, oh, I'm stripping over the flags here. Some of them are getting a bit borderline, but that one's okay. Um, so yeah, loads going on. Um, we're super excited that Alpha has started again. Um, if you have somebody in mind who you think you would like to bring along to that, do please bring them along. We've got a, um, a few people coming along, 
Do pray for them. If you're not coming, keep praying. You know, this is what we're about as a church. We're about reaching the people with God's word. Um, that's what we've been called to do. And we're going to be talking a bit about that later. Um, then we've got prayer. As you all know, that we've obviously covered presence very much in our vision month and so we're going to be praying for the nations so do make sure you get along to that um, I often hear people say oh I don't think we're praying a lot or we're not praying enough and then we put a prayer meeting on nobody turns up for it so guys if we want to see God move in the nations if we want to see God move in this nation we need to get, sacrifice a bit of our time and get on our knees and pray. So there will be corporate prayer and worship. So do come along. Don't miss out. Because I really think God's going to do some fantastic stuff. And I don't want you to think, I don't want you to be here in the next day. Oh, wasn't that great? And then you wasn't there. So make sure you get along to that. And we do still need volunteers for the cafe. So do speak to Leslie if you can do that. And if you enjoy cleaning... Um, or housekeeping, um, do let us know because we have a few hours of housekeeping going um, and that might just be your way of being able to um, serve the church but, but earn a little bit as well. So that's something to look for. Right, we're going to, um, if I can call the band up, we're going to take our tithes. Um, so there's going to be two collections this morning, just so you know. So the Bible talks about our tithes and our offerings. Um, so this one is our tithes. The tithe is what we sow into the house of God. The, where God has put us, that's what we give into the house of God. Our offerings is anything we give on top of our tithe, and that's where we send those things out. So our tithe is going to be now, our offering, we are going to be sending out to Rwanda, because that's one of our mission partners. You'll be hearing a, a bit about them later. Um, and they really need a vehicle in order to get out so that they can get to some of the villages quite far out. It's about a four-hour walk there and obviously four hours back, maybe a bit longer on the way back because they're probably tired. But um, a vehicle would be really, really helpful. So we're going to do that at the end. So we're going to give to God now. We're going to give our tithe into the storehouse and the place that God has put us. Put us and then later we're going to do our offerings as a gift to the people of Rwanda. So if you'd just like to stand and we can sing together. Thank you. 
Mission Sunday. I love Mission Sunday. I love mission. It's, it's one of those things that um, I don't know how to describe, but that, that excites you in a way that nothing else does. If you have never been on mission, whether local or, or international, there is something about taking yourself out of your comfort zone and putting yourself in completely in God's hands and allowing him to use you to speak into the lives of of people. And so we've got Chris. Chris is coming up and he's going to share with us um, just a little bit and then we're going to have a bit of an interview and, and, and chat through what we do as a church. But Chris is um, heads up our missions and so he is all knowing about everything that is missions in the church. So we're going to look forward to hearing from you, Chris. Welcome up. Give him a big round of applause. Thank you. So is this coming through okay? Can you hear? Can you hear me? Is this turned on? Yep, great, okay. All knowing about missions, I mean, why do I need notes if that's the case? I, I don't know, it's, it's not quite right, is it? But thank you, Rachel. So haven't we had an amazing series of visions so far? Hasn't it been incredible? You know, we've been, we've been looking at the growing, we've been looking at the flowing, and now we're looking at the going. And, and you know, some of the things that, that we've heard have really challenged me, really challenged me over the last month or so. Um, Josh spoke last week and he... He quoted Bill Johnson, actually, and um, Bill Johnson, I, 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 he's one of my favorite speakers, I love listening to him, and he quoted, he spoke something a few weeks ago which blew my mind. I like coffee. Anyone like coffee? Yeah. Aaron likes coffee, I know Aaron likes coffee. Bill Johnson said this, his idea of a great cup of coffee is that he can walk on it without faith. <laughs> <laughs> it's so thick, it's so strong, he can walk on it without faith. But faith, I want to talk about faith this morning. It's a tenuous link, I know. But I want to talk about faith this morning and how it relates to mission. So bear with me on this, okay? We're going to look at two characters in the New Testament. We're going to look at Saul, who later became Paul. We're going to look at Ananias as well. And their paths intertwined on one occasion. So turn with me to Acts 9. I haven't got a, a, a slide of this today. So if you've got your Bibles, please open them up. Turn with me to Acts chapter 9. And this is when Paul um, met Jesus, when Saul met Jesus. And he was on the Damascus road. So we're starting at verse 3. And it says, as he was approaching Damascus, this is Saul, on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Just pause there for a moment. Saul had been instrumental in, in persecuting believers, persecuting Christians. He, was, um, he thought he was doing the right thing in, in the religious times of the day, but he wasn't. He was actually directly against what Jesus was trying to do in that time. In fact, he had, it says that he had breathed threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. So the voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what you must do. 
The men, with, the men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now there's a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him in a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized, he's authorized by the leading priests to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales from, fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterward, he ate some food and regained his strength. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days and immediately began preaching about Jesus. Immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue, saying, he is indeed the son of God. All who heard him were amazed. Isn't this the same man who caused such devastation among Jesus' followers in Jerusalem, they asked? And didn't he come here to arrest them and take them in, chains to the leading priests? Saul's preaching became more and more powerful. And the Jews in Damascus couldn't refute his proofs that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. They could not refute that Jesus was the Messiah. So we've got two people. We've got Saul on the one hand, and we've got Ananias on the other. Saul, let's look at him first. Saul, he was a guy who persecuted Christians, but his life was radically changed. His life was radically turned around, and he became an, an, a hero of the faith, an amazing guy. Do you know he wrote 13 of the 27 books in the New Testament. That's incredible, isn't it? That's incredible. Uh, and those were Romans, both Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. You know, that is incredible. From where he started out to have his life so changed, to get there, absolutely incredible. Ananias, on the other hand, um, this Ananias, there are three mentioned in Acts, three mentioned in the New Testament. There was the first one, Ananias, who died because he lied to the Holy Spirit. Ananias, Ananias and Sapphira, remember that? Then there was this Ananias, and then there was Ananias, the high priest, later on, Acts 20, something or other. Uh, later on in Acts 28, I think. But for our Ananias here, this is the only time that he was mentioned in the Bible. We don't know much about him. We don't know where he came from. Really? We don't know where he was born. We don't know where he died. We don't know what else he did. He just seemed to crop up and then disappear. But what we do know is this. Through his openness to receive a vision from the Lord, through his openness to act on that vision, his obedience to act on it, even through fear, you know, God, do you know who this guy is, Saul? Do you really know who this guy is, Saul? He's against us. He's not for us, right? Even through all that, he was obedient to answer the call and get involved. And through that, Saul heard the gospel. Saul could see again, was baptized and was commissioned into a life of mission. So on the one hand, we've got Paul, missionary Saul, who became Paul, missionary extraordinaire. All-round cool guy. We've got Ananias. To be honest, he's a bit of a one-hit wonder, isn't he? Remember those? Do you still have those? I don't know. One hit wonder that we know of. There might have been other amazing things that he did, but only this one thing is recorded in the Bible. What I want to draw out of this is that without Ananias, we may not have had a Saul. Jesus 
He wove their lives together in a rich tapestry. He wove them together so that they, they, their paths would cross for such a time as this and that, 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 that history would be changed. The future is marked. God has got a, got a, got a crossroads in Saul's life. And Ananias, Ananias was... was um, he responded to the call. He was obedient to the call. He intervened in Saul's life through Jesus and, uh, and Saul was saved. And Saul was commissioned. Talk about a U-turn. Ananias only had a relatively small part to play, but boy, what a part that was. And it got me thinking, you know, no matter how big, no matter how small the part that I've got to play in faith, in the faith journey is, no matter how big or how small it is, in building God's kingdom, changing people's lives, I, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss out. I don't want to draw back when I should be advancing. I don't want to step back. I don't want to cower when I should be taking ground. You see, you've heard the phrase, there but, the grace of, but for the grace of God. Well, I really pray there by the grace of God. There by the grace of God for Riverside Church. There by the grace of God we are taking ground. There by the grace of God the kingdom of God is advancing. Amen? No matter how far outside of my comfort zone things get, I want to always be able to say God's got this. God's got me. So the message is really simple this morning. When it comes to mission, we all have a part to play. Whether it's a life of missionary adventure, a life dedicated to mission with what I call a mission with a big M, you know, the, 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 the grand missionary theme, or whether it's mission woven into your life, whether it's mission into, your, into, into the workplace, into the community, into, into everything that we do, we all have a part to play. Just like Ananias. You might be a Saul who became Paul. You might be an Ananias. But I challenge you today, really seek God and be obedient where he leads. Because this is a missional life. If you intentionally look out for what God's doing and intentionally listen to what he's saying, he will guide you. He will lead you. He will lead me and guide me. So I shared this on Vision Night, so apologies if, if anyone's heard this before, but Matthew 22, 37 to 40 says, I want to recap on this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. See, we believe, here, we believe that as born-again Christians, mission should be such an integral, an intrinsic part of our DNA that it becomes an intentional part of our lives. I'm going to say that again because that was quite good. <laughs> we believe that mission should be such an intrinsic part of our DNA that it becomes an intentional part of our lives. Yeah. Part of the very fabric of, who make, of what makes us who we are. See, Matthew 22 says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and elsewhere it says strength. That's the most important thing. Then it says to love our neighbor as ourselves. So the most important thing for our neighbors is also to love the Lord their God with all the hearts of mind and strength. And if we love the Lord our God with all of our hearts of mind and strength, second thing, love our neighbors, it should be our calling. It should be something that's so natural within us to want to say, hey, look, I can show you there's a better way. I can show you how to love the Lord. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? How if it's so important to us, it's so important to everyone else, it's so important to the heart of God, and if it's so important to the heart of God, it's something that we should be transferring to other people. It should be infectious, shouldn't it? The very heart and essence of mission. So how does this fit into what we're doing here at Riverside? Well, we want to give every single person here the opportunity to be involved in mission in some way, shape, or form. Whether that's in prayer, whether that's in giving, whether that's in actual undertaking missions trips. Something, something changes within us when we become involved in mission. It's not just about the people that we reach. It's about who we are ourselves. So can you pray? Can you pray? Get involved in mission.
can you give? Get involved in mission. Can you go on a missions trip? Well, guess what? You're getting involved in mission. So this right here, right now, is like the departure lounge of an airport. And the destination we're going on is mission. Did anyone get their tickets this morning when they walked in? We're going to go through that later. Don't lose them, okay? These are important. These, these are really important, so don't lose them. Do you want to be on board the flight? Don't wait for the final call. Don't miss your calling into mission. Get on board and come along for the ride of your life. And we're going to be talking more about that. There's going to be an interview later on. And we're going to be unfolding the vision that we have for Riverside this morning. But right now, we're going to run a short video clip and uh, then some more. Thank you. It says to him is go. Leave everything you've ever known. Go to an unknown and uncharted place. And I will bless you and you will be a blessing. Go, Abraham. And then there's Moses. And God meets him in the desert and speaks to him and says, Go, Moses, go to the place you came from, to the people where you once were. Go, because I am sending you. Go and help my people find freedom and redemption. Go, Moses. And then there's Jeremiah, the prophet. He's young, he's inexperienced, he's afraid. And God says, Go, Jeremiah, I'm with you. And then there's Elijah, Esther. Ezekiel, Ruth, and many others who heard the call of God to go, and they went. And then the final words of Jesus to his disciples before he ascended into heaven, go. I've heard it said that you can be comfortable or courageous, but you can't be both. That's true for Abraham, true for Moses, true for Jeremiah, true for you, and true for me. See, in the Bible, there are comforting words like forgiveness, freedom and redemption and adoption. But in the Bible, there are also commanding words like repent, believe, follow, and go. Maybe that's the words you need to hear today, to go. Go across the room, across the hall, go across the street, go across the campus, go across the city, the nation, go across the world, go. It's important for us to remember that this isn't just a command to go, this is an opportunity. An opportunity to bless and to bring hope and to be salt and to shine light in dark places and to give to others what was first given to us. You see, we don't just go because that's what good Christians do. We go because 2,000 years ago, God looked down on a broken and hopeless and hurting world and he looked on with compassion. And then he looked at his son, his one and only son, the one and only person who could do anything about it. And he looked at him and he said, go. And he did. And he lived, and he died, and he rose, and now he reigns. And now we go, because he did it first. He moved from heaven to earth so that we could move from comfort to courage, and so that's my prayer for you. Not just that you would move to a new city with a new zip code, but that you would move from comfort to courage. That we would all move from complacency to urgency. My prayer for you is that the most beautiful thing in the world to you would not be cars, clothes, and careers, but the gospel of Jesus Christ, to know him and to make him known. And my prayer for you is that today, you would put your yes on the table and you would leave it there to go wherever and whenever God leads you to go. And so I can't promise that it'll always be exciting. Can't promise it'll always be easy. Can't promise it'll always make sense, but I can promise you this, it will always be worth it. Well, if that didn't move you, I don't know yeah. if it's going to move you. 
Um, so we're going we're gonna to have a chat. Chris is going to join me in a moment. But before we did, one of the people um, that has made that um, step of faith to go is our new Pays worker. So, Mateus, did you want to just come round the front so people can see you? You'll know him because he's, um, he's uh, wearing his yellow Brazil top. Come on. Look, oh, you can join me up here. Look, here you go. So, Mateus came in, flew in yesterday, got here just after 11 last night, something like that. Um, and so, he's probably absolutely exhausted. But um, So, look after him. Be nice. Say hello. Um, and and um, just tell us where you're from um, and just a little bit, because I know you've been in England before. Just very briefly what you've yeah. done. So, I'm from Brazil. <laughs> And yeah, I have been in England before, I think in 2019 to 2020. I have been in Liabe, I don't know if you guys know where it is, it's in Linto, real, like really close from here. But yeah, first time was a different experience, I know that now will be a different one, I think it's more responsibility, because I know that now is like more a missionary thing, you know, more about lives than it was the last time. But yeah, I think it was like two years or three of preparation for being here. I was preparing in Brazil, so I feel that I'm ready to be serving here and to do what I will do here. So I'm glad to be here with you guys and I'm glad to be serving in this church for this year. So thank you for welcoming me. Let's, let's give it, yeah. That's fantastic, and great English as well. Much better than my Portuguese. <laughs> so I'm going to invite Chris to come and join me up here, and we're just going to just talk a little bit about some of what we've got going on as a church, um, some of the mission partners that we um, partner with. Um, so Chris, we've got quite a few partners. Why don't you tell us just briefly about them and where they are in the world? Yeah, great. Well, thank you. I mean, it's it, we... we I've got to say, whatever we, whatever we talk about this morning, whatever we do, we can only do it because you are with us. Okay, it's such a team effort. And as a church, we really kind of punch above our weight uh, because we engage with so many people around the world. So I just want to thank, thank everyone, really, for, for partnering with that, with that work. I mean, you know, we, we're talking really about global mission, but, you know, we mustn't forget, you know, really important mission on doorstep. The Alpha Course, which Joe and, and Mike um, really, you know, lead up really well, is... is uh, is fantastic. Uh, and the other things that we, that, you know, that, that go on in this house, we, we haven't got time to mention them all today, but, you know, it's, it's, in, it's mission, relational evangelism mission. It's really great stuff. But throughout the UK, we have, um, we, uh, we, we engage with Revive Newbridge. Gareth and Hannah obviously were, um, were part of this church for, for many years. We've got some, got some slides. I don't know if we've got those uh, on, on there. So, yeah, Gareth and Hannah. Um, we, we also engage with uh, Bethel Community Church in Red Ruth, with Jay and Ruth Gunn, uh, way down in, in deepest, darkest Cornwall, don't we? Yeah. Um, and also, let's not forget Exmouth. So there are somewhere between 35 and 40,000 people who live in Exmouth. I think it's the fourth largest town in Devon. And, you know, it's going to be unfolded about uh, relaunching Riverside Exmouth over the, ne the next few weeks and months. And that is so exciting. You know, this is all our home-based mission type thing. But then further on into Europe, you know, we, we, we're engaging with Gianni and Angela Gator in, in Vienna, Austria, which, which, is, which is, you know, absolutely, absolutely great, isn't it? And some of the things that they're doing in church planting over there is, is inspirational. We've got Guitar Raid um, with Dave. Um, Dave, stand up, take a bow. In-house, there, yeah. Dave. Uh, and Dave and Guitar Raid really work predominantly, I think, I'm right in saying, in, Mo in Eastern Europe. Uh, and the, the heart is, in case you don't know, the heart is to, uh, to, to birth the heart of worship and facilitate the heart of worship in communities uh, who are less 
privileged than ours. And so they, they sew guitars around, around the world. It's fantastic. Yeah. No, and what I would say is Dave loves to talk. It's, it's such a passion of Dave. He loves to talk about it. And he'd love to show you his guitar aid office. So if you, if you, if you are interested in that, catch him, talk to him about it. It's, it's such an amazing mission field. And he's doing such a great job there. Um, and, and he just loves to share that vision with you. So do make sure you seek him out and just say, Dave, I'd love to see what's going on, or, you know, what you've got going on. So that's our local in-house missionary. Yeah, great. We've also got looking at worldwide now. We're looking at uh, Janet Wheeler, who uh, for many years was an administrator, a missionary administrator in, in Ghana and still involved over there at this, at this time. Claire Rogers, River Valley Church in Minas, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul in Minnesota. And she, uh, she preaches, she uh, serves with the homeless community, she um, works with women's groups as well. You know, incredible work that goes on. Eric and Sunel Stoneman in Wiesenberg in South Africa, uh, part of the YWAM team there. I was talking to Eric just a couple of days ago. And what they're involved with, launching a new season of, of, of teaching is incredible, absolutely incredible. We've got, um, who else have we got? We've got Riverside Church Kenya, uh, which, which Rose started, didn't she? And Rose planted. We've also got Cam Rwanda, who are uh, quite a new relation for us. Um, but um, they do work to... Uh, to, to intervene into situations for people who have been ostracized from society. And it's quite, what, people are being rescued out of quite harrowing circumstances and situations. So what they do is really quite, quite amazing. Uh, and that's in addition to Open Doors, who we relate with, um, Compassion UK, who many people, you know, over 40 people in this, in this fellowship sponsor children through Compassion UK. You know, that is so great. And also we're looking at potentially linking up with uh, IJM, <coughs> excuse me, International Justice Mission. Um, and, and in fact, we're, we're blessed in that we've got um, Claire Mulrooney from IGM going to be joining us for a short time on the 9th of October in the morning. Going to be sharing just a little bit about what they do. Um, so come for that. That's going to be really good. And I could go on. Anyway, you could. there you go. You could. So we, so we have loads, loads of missionary parts. Like you say, we're, we're, we're not a, a big, huge church, but we do have a big voice. We shout very loud. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we're excited about that because that's what Jesus asked us to do. Um, so what are some of the missions trips that we've actually got going in the next year? Right. So we are looking at... Um, a, a kind of a youth-oriented trip up to uh, Newbridge, South Wales, with Gareth and Hannah. So that's going to be coming up within the next 12 months, which is really exciting. Uh, Bed Bethel Church in Bethel Community Church in Redruth, we're looking at, uh, at just coming alongside them and helping them through their journey at the moment. Again, and, and we're not quite sure what form that will take over the coming few months, but there's going to be some kind of link-up and liaison there, which, which is great. Kenya. Uh, we are going to be running a trip in February next year to Kenya to join with the work of, um, of uh, Riverside Church in Kasumu in Kenya, which was the church that Rose planted, uh, to continue her legacy, you know, to, um, to lead seminars, lead a seminars there, um, to get involved with local street um, evangelism, house evangelism, house to house evangelism, school activities, kids clubs, uh, and also women's meetings for the, for the ladies who are going. So, you know, it's going to be quite a, quite a wide-ranging remit. And also there's going to be the opportunity to link up with people who sponsor Compassion Kids in, uh, in, in Kasumu, yeah. which, is, which is fantastic. June 23, June next year, we're looking as well to go to Rwanda and link up with Cam Rwanda um, to join with them and uh, look at church leader training. So we're going to be engaging with that. We're going to be looking at, there's, there's potential as well for, a, for a, a mission crusade type activity when there's, there's uh, four to 5,000 people expected to attend. Church leader training. Yeah. But also what Camera Rwanda want us to experience is, is, is to experience something of where the country has come from. People remember the Rwandan genocide from years ago and uh, how the country has come through that and, uh, and is, is now on a firmer footing and going forward. So there's going to be a visit to the Genocide Museum as well um, to look at the history and then the practical application of God's love in the community now. So it's going to be a really amazing trip. The other thing with that is we are also going to see some of the beauty of Rwanda. So we are going to, for, for those that want to go on it, there's going to be a trip to do a bit of a mini safari. 
So I, I know that doesn't sound like mission, but, um, the, but they, they very much wanted us to see both sides of the country, the, the, the horror of what had happened, but e or equally the beauty of the country. And I believe they call it the Switzerland of um, Africa, don't they? It's so That's stunning right. there. So that will be really nice as well. But obviously still a very broken community. It, it is, uh, it is. And, um, but, but, the, but with organisations like Camera and a community, community action for mercy, it's really trying to, to bridge those gaps in community and try and link people together in the name of Jesus, which is, which is incredible. Yeah, so, so one of the things that we are going to do um, is we are going to take a collection for Kamruanda. Um, so one of the areas particularly they, they work with is in, in the country, educationally, um, they, they are, are struggling, particularly in um, sexual health and things like that. So what we're finding is a lot of girls are being assaulted um, um, falling pregnant are then cast off by their families because of the shame of it, even though it, it is not, not any fault of their own, but there's a shame attached to it. And then we have these young girls, often teenagers, with a child with nobody to look out for them. Um, and they find themselves forced into an industry then, uh, the very thing of the, the abuse and the assault that's happened to them, to try and raise money to feed a child. And so what Cam Rwanda does is it, it works with these girls, it looks after their children, helps feed them, and it puts the girls back into education so that they can finish their education, they can be trained in a trade, and that they can, they can make money from um, sewing or, or different things. There's different areas that they, they train them in. So it's a massively important um, work that they do in actually giving these girls their dignity back, um, giving them a life, a safer life, um, and, and a lot of these girls, and educating families. And so one of the things they often do is reconciliation between families, educating families, um, reconciling families uh, together. And um, that, that is an incredible thing yeah. that they're doing. Yeah. So um, that's just a couple of the things. And, and for the trip, we will be going to see some of those projects um, and meet some of the, the babies and the children and the mums um, and the class that they go in the, the education places. So um, as well as constructing a house, because I believe that they've built a couple of um, homes, um, huts, for, for some of the mums as well. So we'll be involved in that as well. So that's exciting. It is really exciting, yeah. So. Um you mentioned about the, the offering? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so what we're going to do, for, like I said earlier, um, for them to get out to some of these um, villages that, that are quite a long way out, um, they are having to walk and their staff are having to walk. Predominantly, their staff are volunteers. Just to let you know, um, over the last few months, Riverside Church has employed a care worker out there full time. So we have a care worker out in Rwanda um, supporting these mum and babies um, out there already. So we're super excited to go and meet her. Um, but, but yeah, there's a lot of walking involved for them. And so they're talking about a vehicle, they're talking about a motorbike initially, um, but it, if, if we can raise enough, they might actually get a car because then they can get more than one or two people out there. Um, so that's what we're going to do in a moment. We're going to take an offering to see if we can get them a vehicle so that they can get out to these villages, they can spend more time out there. Um, it will give them op uh, a vehicle. If they can get a car, give them a vehicle in order that they can bring um, people that may be sick or, or children that may be sick into the city to get the, the care that they need there. So it's a really important thing. Um, so do pray while we're just carrying on chatting. Yes, yeah, so uh, just to give you a bit of uh, insight, the care, the care worker that we are employing full-time costs around about $75 per month. That's a full-time salary for a care, for a care uh, worker out in Rwanda. If they were to hire a car to transport the care worker around, that costs $75 a day. That's the, the disparity in cost out there. And uh, a, a motorbike, perhaps $20 a day to, to rent, to hire. So that, that is really unsustainable, can't do that. But from their hub, from the hub, the base that they work from, to get to the various interventions that they work with is, as Rachel said, it's 25, between 25 and 40 kilometers, which is a long walk. 
Um, so we really want to, if we can, if we can help supply a vehicle, then we can enable the care worker and the rest of the team to actually achieve so much more uh, in their working day, in their in in their lives, really. So that's really the heart of it, isn't it? It is, it is. And you may feel that actually um, I don't have the opportunity to go out to one of these countries on mission, but this is something that I can do. Um, we can sow into people. Isn't it amazing we can sow into people over the other side of the world and make a difference in their lives? So, th so that's super exciting. So your tickets, Chris, do you want to explain the tickets to people? Yeah, so there's, there, have you, uh, everyone got a ticket? Yeah. Great, okay, so... Kingdom Airlines, we're, we're fly, flying the right flag, flying the right colour. There is a, a flight reference number on the bottom. There, there's a bit, of a bit of a puzzle there, which I think has been set. So um, if you just want to try and work out what that is, MT28, gate 1620. Um, and on the tear-off slip on the side, uh, there are six options. So if you feel, when you pray, if you feel that you're, you're, you'd like to know more about these, these mission trips which are coming up, then just tick the destination you're interested in and put your name on, on, on the slip. Give it back and uh, we can, we'd love to talk to you about what's going on. I really would. As I say, it's, you know, we want everyone to be involved in some way about, uh, with, with mission. Uh, and just to let you know as well, you know, we are looking further afield as, as to missions trips, maybe to Vienna uh, and maybe to Eastern Europe as well. So there's going to be something for everyone, really, within reason. There's going to be something for everyone, whether it's Exmouth or Africa. So, yeah, fill in, fill in the details at the bottom. We have Exmouth. We've got local mission. We've got uh, Wales. We've got Cornwall. We've got Kenya. We've got Rwanda. So please do, you know, fill it in, give it back, and we'd love to talk to you. Fantastic. And do just remember, you know, there is your mission field is where God has placed you. So that will often be in your workplace, your school, wherever God has put you is your mission field. And God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us um, and in our local um, place that he's put us. And so sometimes we can look really far away and go, that's mission. But actually, where God has placed you is the most important mission, your family. God has placed you in your family that you can um, speak into their lives and that's be right. salt and light. So, so, so don't forget that. For you know, it, Sometimes we look so far afield that we forget, actually. And, and it, it comes at a cost. I am not going to lie to you. Mission comes at a cost. It comes, if you're traveling, a financial cost. If it's in your family... Sometimes there's an emotional cost to, to being brave enough to actually share with your family about the love of Jesus. But it is so worth it. If you've ever led somebody to, to the Lord, there is nothing quite like it. You know, knowing that person is going to spend their eternity in heaven with Jesus, it is the best gift that you can give somebody. Yeah. So don't forget about your around the mission field around you that God has placed you in as well. But we're going we're gonna to sing together now as a band. And we are going to take up an offering for Rwanda. Um, do think and pray about your tickets and where you believe that God would like to send you. Um, Exmouth is going to be a fantastic opportunity. Um, and we're going to be launching that next Sunday night. So, you know, if you just want a taster of what it is to get out and let's see what we can do in a different area, you know, be part of that as well. But before that, we're going to take our offering and um, over to you, Anna.
amazing. Shall we pray together? Yeah, let's pray. Yeah, Father God, we want to say thank you. We thank you for the calling that you've placed on all of our lives. We thank yeah. you for the purpose that you've got for every single one of us, God. We thank you for your nations. We thank, thank you for Jesus. your people. God, we thank you for what it is that you are doing across the nations. And right now, God, we want to say that here we are, send us. Yeah. God, would you use us? Would you inspire us? Father God, yeah. would you work through us in our communities, in our workplaces, yeah, Father God, absolutely. whether it's local mission, whether it's global mission, Holy Spirit, we pray, would you come? Would you give us all the tools that we need, Father God? Yes. And we pray, would we not stop until all have heard your name? Father God, we don't want to shy away from the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we want to tell every single person that you died on the cross for them yes. and that you rose again, Father God. Yeah. So we just pray right now. We pray for just an outpouring of the mission of Jesus Christ upon yeah. this church, Father God. We yeah. pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit to come to empower us and to motivate us to move, to go and to do. Yes. Holy Spirit, we love you. We thank you for what it is that you're doing. And Father God, we want to partner with you yeah. in all that it is that you will achieve. In your precious name, amen. 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 Well, it's been so good this so morning, good. hasn't it? It's, it's been so good. so good. We're so glad that you've been able yeah. to join us. Les, how was your first time back on it the was, studio? It was really right? fun. It was really fun. It was, really, it was easier than last time. So gotta go with that. It's because I'm such a delight to do it with, isn't it? Maybe. I want to say. <laughs> Anyway, it's been so good to have you here. Yes. And we hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And if you would like to get involved or you are interested in giving towards yeah. the Rwanda Cam Rwanda thing, please drop us a message on our Facebook or Instagram pages or equally drop us an email at info at lovexter.com yeah. because we'd love to get in touch and we'd love you to get involved in the mission. So yes. that's all from us for that's this everything. week and we will see you next Thank week. Thank you everyone. See you next week. Bye. Bye.